Today, we will explore intermediate level features in Vim Motions, building upon the concepts covered in our previous Vim Motions video. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend checking it out first. This demo will take place inside NeoVim instead of VS Code because of few VS Code Vim plugin limitations, but most of what we see today should work inside VS Code. To fold all code blocks in our code, we can use the Z key in combination with the capital M key. This action folds all blocks, including nested ones. To open all folds, we can type Z with the capital R key. Individual folds can be folded by typing Z and the C key, and unfolded by typing Z and the O key. The line indenting here appears to be incorrect. Single lines can be auto-indented by typing two times equal signs. Alternatively, all lines can be visually selected and indented by typing an equal sign. To shift selected lines to the right, use the greater than sign. To shift left, use the less than sign. This action can be repeated by typing dot key. Here are some roots. Now we want to append the prefix dashboard to all of these paths. We can take advantage of visual block mode for this task. By selecting the paths vertically and pressing capital I, we will enter into insert mode. After typing the desired prefix and pressing the escape key, this modification will be automatically applied to all the previously selected lines. Let's undo this change by pressing U. If we want to make changes at multiple places in a line, we can use macro recording. To start recording, we will press the letter Q and A. The macro will be stored as the character A. Here we can see that the recording has started. Now we can jump to the first double quote by typing F and double quote. Here we will append text by pressing the A letter. We will type our prefix and exit into normal mode. Next, we can go to the next space by typing F and space. Start appending the text we want, exit into normal mode, and jump to the next line. Now, let's stop recording by typing Q again. If we type the ampersat and the name of the recording, in our case A, the recording will be applied. Let's apply it again. If we want to apply it to the remaining lines, we can type a number and apply. But how do we know how many lines are remaining? What is the exact number? For that, we can enable relative numbering inside Vim by typing set relative number. Now we can see that line numbers are relative to the current cursor position. Here we can see the last row is on line number 14, excluding the current line. So typing 15, ampersat, and A will apply the macro to all the remaining 15 lines. Relative numbering provides us with line number markings. If we wish to navigate to the first route, we can identify its relative line number and use that information by typing the line number followed by K to reach the first route. These line numbers can be employed in various commands, such as delete, change, and others. If we want to jump between starting and closing curly braces, square brackets, or parentheses, we can use the percentage sign. Here, if we are at the starting curly bracket and want to jump to the ending bracket, we can simply type the percentage sign. We can press 3 and capital J to join the next three lines, or we can visually select multiple lines and join them by pressing the capital J key. We can toggle the case of a character by typing the tilde character. To make a word uppercase, type G, capital U, and W, or make it lowercase by typing G, U, and W. To make the entire line uppercase, type G and capital U twice, or lowercase by typing G and U twice. We can increment the number under the cursor by pressing the Control A key, and decrement it by typing the Control X key. To sort lines in files, we can use the sort command. To sort and keep unique, we can use sort U. To sort in descending order, we can type sort with exclamation mark. We can read external file into current buffer by typing read and path of file. If we execute now, we can see content of that file is read at cursor position. We can also read standard output from external command by typing read, exclamation mark, and name of command. We can see names of files and folders are copied at cursor position. To use external commands and read command output in current buffer, we can select a block of text and send it to JQ, which is a JSON query tool. 
The objective is to retrieve the value of a specific key from the JSON. Upon executing this command, JQ will be invoked and the output will be read into the current buffer. We can perform a search and replace for a specific range or the entire file using the substitute command. In this process, we can visually select a range and replace a word with a new one, where as stands for substitute. We can delete all lines that match a certain pattern using the G and D commands. In this case, all lines matching the specified pattern will be deleted. Alternatively, we can delete all lines that do not match a certain pattern by using the V and D commands. Consider a comma-separated file. If we want to swap the first column with the second, we can group all these columns using a comma and regular expression. Notice that we have three groups here. Next, we can swap the first column with the second. If we hit Enter now, we can see that the columns are swapped. Grouping is particularly useful when processing and filtering logs on a server. Vim contains 26 named registers, 10 numbered registers, and a few other special registers. These registers store text from recent operations such as delete, yank, or change. To delete a word, one can use the D, I, and W commands. Subsequently, typing the register command reveals that the unnamed register now holds the word that was recently deleted. The plus register is particularly noteworthy as it points to the system clipboard. To paste text from a specific register, one can type double quotes followed by the name of the register, in this case, plus for the clipboard, and PE. This action effectively pastes text from the clipboard. We can copy text into a specific register by typing double quotes, followed by the name of the register and the copy command. For instance, if we type double quotes S, Y, I, and W, the word under the cursor will be copied into the S register. This can be verified by using the register command. That's it for today. If you missed our previous Vim Motions video, you can check it out on the end screen. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks.